You don't even want to know what's going on in the back of this van today. It is absolute mayhem. Carnage on another level. I don't even want to look in the back again. I certainly don't want to have to sleep in there tonight, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But I'll show you that shortly. But for now, let me just tell you what we're up to. So a few episodes ago, I mentioned that I'd found a barn where basically there was a group of people there building their vans. So that is where I'm heading. Now it's in a secret location. I can't tell you where it is because I've been told not to. But all that is gonna happen as of tomorrow morning. Tonight we'll find somewhere random to pull up and stay. But right now I've just got to Reading and that is for an important stopover to visit Rogue Alloys. I have made it, I'm inside, before they closed for once, which is quite impressive for me. We all know what my timing's like. As you can see behind me on the wall here is a big selection of beautiful wheels. Now, do you know what? Since I started this build, I knew that I was going to be getting some alloys at some point, and I had my heart set on these particular ones, but I've just found out, well, in fact, I say that, I found out about two weeks ago, they will not fit on my van. They're made specifically for the crafters and the sprinters and all of that. So I was kind of stuck as to which ones to go for, and nothing really stood out to me as being the one that would fit onto my van. That is until a friend of a friend told me that there were some new wheels coming out specifically for the Ducato, and I got in contact with Rogue and I asked them very kindly if I could possibly be the first person to have these wheels on my van. So these particular wheels that I've gone for, they are called the Raptor. They do them in black and gunmetal gray. I think you can choose what color the rim is around the edge as well. I've gone for full gunmetal gray because I think it will suit the van. They are 16 inch wheels, so they're a little bit bigger than the original ones that are already on there, but the big part of them is the tires. I had to go for the BFGs, they just look too good not to. Plus with my upcoming trip to the Arctic Circle, they're just gonna keep me that little bit safer in the snow. And would you look at that for service? So I've now been handed a caramel latte. You don't get that type of treatment at Quick Fit. So I'm now in the unit, the guys behind me are currently fitting at the new wheels. I cannot wait to see what these look like. Honestly, I've been waiting for this day for a while. This is the first foot ready to go on the ankle. I've seen people getting their wheels done before and I know how much of a difference it makes, but when it's on your own van and you see it in the flesh, unbelievable, check this out. I would have loved to have shown you the wheels in a nicer setting somewhere out in the wild where this beast now belongs. But I'm losing daylight and I need to get to Tesco's. Not that I've got anywhere to put food in the back. I still haven't shown you that carnage yet. The only other thing that I wanted to let you know about is the road noise with these things. Some people go for other tires because they say the BFGs have got too much road noise. I've been told by people that own them that it's not really that noticeable, so don't worry about it. But once I've driven it for a day or two, I will let you know if I've noticed a difference on the different road surfaces. But for now, let's head to Tesco's. When I say there is carnage going on in the back of this thing, believe me, I mean carnage. Oh, would you look at them go. She is a beauty. Look at the state of this. I can't even get in. How the hell am I gonna stay in here tonight? Underneath there is just as bad as well. The whole of the bottom is just filled up. Everything out of my storage, everything out of my house is all been bundled right in, ready for the two week build session. I've taken the fridge out. I think I might have even taken out the air fryer, but I've certainly taken out my power station that's big enough to run it. So it doesn't look like I've got many options for dinner tonight. All right, slight change of plan, maybe. My route was taking me past a branch of my gym. So I'm gonna go and check the car park there for any restrictions, because if I can park at my gym, then that means in the morning, I could just get up and have a hot shower straight away. So the actual gym bit does have a barrier and that bit shuts at 10. I don't think there's any restrictions in this main bit. Yeah, I think we can get away with this, you know. There's no signs and no barriers. I reckon out of all the spots, I've found my absolute favorite. I mean, it's right near the IMAX cinema. I very much doubt anyone's going to be going to the cinema in the morning. The only thing that's a little bit worrying is as the geese have been sectioning off some of these car parking spaces from over there to the skip and then all the way along to here, and I don't know why. I'm hoping he doesn't come along and try and section off this bit, because if he does, we're in trouble. Oh, look at the wheels. See, that's my gym there. That's the side of it. The barrier's just there, so around that corner, 
is the entrance. So as long as we don't get the knock and get moved on, that means a nice hot shower in the morning. Let's attempt to figure out how the hell this is gonna work then. Right, first of all, let's get some light on the subject. Second of all, close ourselves in. And third, lock the doors. Right, here's the plan. This needs to go up to the back. The power station needs to be moved closer to my electric blanket. That can go there. Precariously placed on the toolbox. My camera bag can go up here. I've made myself a little stepping stone, right? The side of the toolbox. I can't step on the microwave because it will literally just cave in. So I step on the toolbox. I fly myself into bed, I've got to get rid of them boxes, and then just sort of live the dream for a bit, I guess. In fact, I need to take this light with us because I'm not coming back to this end of the van to get it. That can go there. God, yeah, this is easy. I might just keep it like this forever. Oh, we better shut that before it's too late. And just like that, we are in. There's also a whole host of other new stuff over there, buried, which I'll show you tomorrow as well. But for now, since I'm living like a king in my luxury, spacious apartment, I thought I would also eat like a king. Welcome to dinner. We've got obviously the food on the platter. We've got a rubbish bag. We've even got wipes to wipe our hands of afterwards and a touch of fruit, strawberry flavored water. But to the good stuff. So this is vintage cheddar brulee. I don't know how you say that, but that's probably not it. So yes, we are having sandwiches. Well, obviously when I say sandwiches, what I actually mean is meat stuffed in chunks of bread because when you're living like this, you have no choice. So step one is you get, cool, that looks quite nice. Yeah, yeah, That's a fine loaf if I do say so myself. Okay, now that we have access to the innards, what you wanna do is you wanna take two fingers, the two finger technique usually works best, you want to slowly ease your way in, not too rough at this stage. And then you want to curl your fingers upwards, bring them forward like that, a little pull, and just like that, she releases the goods. And next up, this is obviously the important stage. So you're going to take your salami, you're going to place it on the top, and then what you've got to do is a simple grab, twist, and squeeze. And then you're left with what can only really be described as an edible form of a superhero. Mmm. That's the one. That bread is good. And you can't even say it's childish because it's literally mature cheese in this bread. And everyone knows that you can't be mature and childish at the same time. I wonder if I could fit my fist in there. God, it's like a boxing glove. Look at it. Looks like dinner is salami on its own. Solitary salami. Ugh, who would have thunk it? Well, I suppose I have got 11 more slices I've got to get through. I've got no fridge to put it in, so why not? In fact, I do actually have a brand new fridge to show you tomorrow. It's underneath there. I got rid of my old one. It is, well, it's like a fridge, really. Like a small cupboard that makes stuff cold. But I'll still show you tomorrow because I love it. But it's not even plugged in at the moment. And over there, there is all sorts of other gear, including my ex-dinner. And I'm going to show you all that tomorrow because underneath that pile, there's some other new stuff which you haven't seen yet. But right now, I hate to break it to you guys, but there is nothing else really that we can do tonight. I can't even get the projector out. I don't even know where it is for starters. And even if I did, I'm not climbing for all that to set it up on the screen. It's quite a long walk back, isn't it? Quite a long walk back. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Good morning, people. I had quite a good sleep. There was a few trucks empty in the bins and all that, but no one disturbed me. I was nice and comfortable and surprisingly warm, actually. But other than a quick fuel stop, maybe pick up some breakfast, I'm just gonna head straight to that barn, so I will catch you guys there. Turns out we are here in the top secret location. And I am now inside. As you can see, the weather is not good. I've been given this space here, which is right by the entrance, 
This is where I'm going to be working on a van and over here I've got this entire section. I've got workbenches, I've got tools, probably not going to use most of them but I can make use of the space. I'm also getting some deliveries of some other bits that are turn up here, some wood and some bits to finish off my roof rack. But whilst they're here, let me just introduce you. You may know this guy, this is Mel. Big oh, van, small world. And this is the big man himself, Aid. Nice to Pleasure to be here mate, I appreciate this so much. No problem. So this is Mel's van, you might have seen this in a recent video. It's uh, almost as big as mine, but... I've literally only just picked it up. You do realise you, you need the floor in a yeah, van. Yeah, that's work in progress. But this is just one of many vans, there's a few down there. I've been introduced to a few of these people. We have emptied the van pretty much. There's a couple of things in the corner there. There's a few little boxes under the bed as well, but mostly the van is now empty because everything has been placed outside. So over here, this is just all my tools and components and things like that. We've got another toolbox there. This is a water tank. This is one which has been custom made for my van. I'll show you that in more detail at a later date because it's got a nice little feature on the end of it. We've got my solar panels. There's two of them. There's another one behind that. There's a big solar panel and a medium sized solar panel. So underneath all of that, that is my top locker and that is the same finish as my kitchen unit there. We've also got a microwave shelf, which is going to be going up towards the ceiling in the van made of the same stuff again. That is just the Max Air cover. This is a very extravagant spice rack, but the reason why it's that big is because it's also acting as a support piece for the microwave shelf. And this I've briefly shown you before. This is my electrical unit that goes over the wheel arch underneath the bed. That's just the inverter. So I've actually started to wire this up already. As you can see, all of these components are connected neatly. The wires go through to the back and after this is installed you won't actually be able to see any of this. And the final component at the moment is this fridge. Now I'm going to show you more about this fridge later because it's actually the biggest fridge that you can get which will still fit under my bed. It's not really for sale in any places but I found out where you can get it from. So once that's installed and I've checked it out for a few weeks I will tell you all about that as well. And then finally I've got some more bits that are going to be turning up here. I've got some swivel seat bases which I'm really looking forward to getting them in. I've got some more aluminium, no, steel strut for the roof rack turning up. And I've also got some random bits of wood which I'm going to be building out the ceiling with. Oh, and the material to cover the ceiling and just general bits like the lights and things like that. As for me, I really think that I've got to crack on and get this done. The whole point of me being here is so that I can just power through it and get as much done as possible, which means I'm not going to film a lot. But next week at some point when I'm nearing to the end of this day here, I will give you an update and show you what's been going on. As always, I just want to say a massive thank you to anyone who's donated to the channel by buying me a brain cell through the link in the description below. I've got to get on the 12 volt planet website to order the rest of my electrical kit so it's ready. I think Bruce is going to turn up to help me with some of the electrics in a couple of days time. So I want to get that order in first thing in the morning and there's a lot of components that I need to make sure I remember to get. So I'm going to walk across my nice clear floor get into my nice clear bed, put down my nice clear head. Think of all the books that I could have read, the complicated building work, which I kind of dread, whilst feeling content because I've been well fed. Remembering my name is Ads and not Ed. Right, that's enough for me. I'm gonna catch some Zeds. Well, I hope you found this video mildly entertaining, slightly informative. If you did, don't forget to give Ads a thumbs up. See you later, bye. <laughs>